Greetings. Today's video is a follow-up on the phase noise of our ADF4351 synthesizer board. You remember in the last video I showed you the phase noise that comes with our main tone at 3408 MHz. And uh, the fact that this could cause an issue when we try to listen to very small signals, and this is the case when you do long distance 10 gig communications, in the presence of a stronger signal in the vicinity of our small signal. And um, I was hopeful that I could try to do something to improve that phase noise. So I did a bit of research and work, and here are my findings. This is our 3408 output from the synthesizer. This, you remember in a previous video, is uh, an idea of when I put my finger on the synthesizer board, move it around, I get some spurs that show up. So clearly the 3408 synthesizer is a big contributor to the phase noise. And just for reference, here's the output of my HP 8673G 2 to 26 gigahertz single generator. Just for reference to show you that things can be better when there's a good design. So I was hopeful I could improve that uh, phase noise on our board and well I did a bit of research on the web and I found a few interesting references, articles, uh, blog posts, forum posts, websites and these references pretty much all come up to the same conclusion which is that the Chinese boards that we can order with the ADF4351 and the ADF5355 which is a similar chip but it goes higher in frequency, even higher that they have weaknesses on the supply, so the power supply of the synthesizer chips. Hmm, this looks promising if it's just a power supply issue, right? And Paul Wade also made measurements of phase noise on various sources, comparing them, and also an article from Golf Mike 8 uh, Bravo Juliet Foxtrot about the ADF 5355. They all suggest to improve the supply on both boards and that will improve the phase noise at least to a certain degree. So I decided to try it out. Their conclusion is that the filtering on the 3.3 volt linear regulator is not sufficient. Essentially that the segregation between the analog 3.3 volt AVDD and the digital 3.3 volt is not sufficient. Mainly also the fact that there's some bulk capacitance that's missing. All it has it is 10 microfarad on the output of the regulator, but the chip is very sensitive on its analog VDD uh, rail uh, of any noise coming from the LDO or the digital VDD. And you notice that the analog VDD is straight out from the linear regulator, in this case the ASM 1117 3.3 volt regulator. So their suggestion is to add a lot of capacitance right here on the output. Ideally it would have been best to use an even better regulator, a very low noise regulator, and that's what analog device is recommending. Unfortunately the Chinese board does not have that type of regulator. The ASM 1117 is not bad but it's not the best and uh, the better regulators are not footprint compatible so it's not as easy as just replacing the regulator but the low-hanging fruit is really to add a lot of bulk capacitance right here on the output. I added a 1000 microfarad 10 volt capacitor right on the output of the LDO. This is a high quality a uh, low ESR Panasonic capacitor added straight on the output of the LDO and here are the results. A 1 MHz wide spectrum analysis of the 10 GHz signal. So this is after the synthesizer has passed through the tripler. This is what we get. So in black the before added capacitance and in blue the after added capacitance. So this is one meg wide. So what we can clearly see is that this cap has an impact on at least two, 300 kilohertz wide. It improves the phase noise 
we can probably say by up to 10 dB of improvement, but it's variable depending on how far we are from the carrier. Now, there's other ways to illustrate this, and it is by doing a phase noise analysis of the before and after, and this is a phase noise plot of the output of the synthesizer, not at 10 gig. I'll show you the result of the 10 gig analysis right after but this one is a 3408 straight out into the spectrum analyzer and I use the KE5FX phase noise software and what we see is that it's probably a draw uh, as far as phase noise it's uh, very similar as is and with the bulk capacitance as is being in blue and with the bulk capacitance added in pink up to about 10 kilohertz we can probably say that there's no real improvement but starting at 10 kilohertz and down to 300 kilohertz we can see a definite improvement in the phase noise so i apologize here i should have uh, averaged out the wiggles because the tool has the ability to do it and you'll see that in a minute uh, for other charts but uh, yeah so clearly there's an improvement and if we look at the 10 gig result i think it's even more compelling if you look blue before capacitor added and pink after capacitor added very clear that some good improvements can be achieved with the added capacitor so hey just adding the capacitor so that was the easy part adding bulk capacitance if we really wanted to improve more i think we'd have to redesign the board really from scratch and I don't want to do this, <laughs> not for this small project. But yeah, redesigning the board with better filtering, uh, better layout probably, would improve the phase noise even better. Now, there's another part to trying to improve the phase noise, and it's playing with the software parameters in the chip. The ADF4351 has six registers that are used to configure the chip, and that's what the PIC microcontroller does when the thing powers up. It sends six values to those registers to configure the chip to the right frequency, right modes, and so on and so forth. So there is one aspect that can be played with, and it has an impact on the phase noise, and it is the charge pump current setting. And this is the amount of current that is used in the charge pump circuit that's located in the PLL feedback loop. And by changing the current, this has an impact on how quickly the PLL loop will respond to phase drifts. So the PLL behavior, essentially. So I've decided to try the smallest current, the highest current, and compared to the midpoint current that I had already set. This is what I was using, you know, when, when you're not sure, you shoot for the midpoint. And this is what I had done initially. So I decided to try 0%, 25%, 50 75 and 100% of the range. And here are the results. What you see here is successive measurements of our 10 gigahertz output, 10.224, after the tripler, of course, because this is ultimately what I'm interested in. And for reference, the blue curves is without any capacitive filter added, okay? And the other plots are with the capacitor added, but with a different charge pump current. So the 2.5, the value that I was using from the beginning, is in pink. Okay, And then you can see that when I go to the smallest value, 0.31, the green curve, the phase noise deteriorates a lot below, say, 30 kilohertz, but then is the best at higher than 30 kilohertz. And then when you look at the other extreme, 5, value of 5 milliamp, it's the red curve, it's the best curve you can get below 30 kilohertz, but then it's the worst one you can get if you do not consider the blue one, which is without capacitor. So it's the worst one you get above 30 kilohertz. So clearly, <laughs> it's a compromise. <laughs> and you can also clearly see the light blue is 1.25 and the yellow is 3.75. And indeed, it just fans out uh, as a function of the current. So I'd probably say that the half point, 2.5 milliamps, the pink curve, is probably the best point you can select. Uh, maybe one could say you definitely want to have as little 
noise as possible, the closest to the carrier. Um, if you have a strong signal that's close by, that will help. It will help by what? By 3, 4, 4 dB, which is not a lot. And then, you know, give in on the fact that that level of noise will carry on up to 100 kHz before it breaks. So, I really don't know the discussion up for debate, but for now I'll be uh, leaving it to the pink curve, which is, I'd say, a compromise. And uh, maybe later I'll want to switch. The improvement is not absolutely crazy, you know, from the midpoint to the best and to the worst. It's, you know, about 5, 6 dB. But, hey, it's there. But I would definitely not select the light blue and the green uh, selections, so the low current, as they induce too much noise close the, to the carrier. And the other takeaway is that there is a pivot point here of these curves. What it is exactly, that 30, 32, 35 kilohertz, probably related to the hardware filtering on the loop itself. I'd have to try the, the math, the frequency response of that loop. Maybe I'll find out that it corresponds to this frequency. Uh, so definitely there's something here and it's for sure physical. It has to do with the loop response. But yeah, something to look into maybe in the future. So all for now, I've improved by between 8 and 10 dB with the bulk capacitance and I've convinced myself that the initial setting of a charge pump current was probably the best compromise. But hmm, up for debate, if you want to discuss in the comments, I'll be happy to discuss with you. All for now, 7-3.